Hello? Are you busy? Got anything you want to make? How about... How about Ixa? You want to make Ixa? Yeah, you want to make Ixa. Show us how to make Ixa. Do it now. Uh... Okay. Okay, so the first thing I did was ask a couple of my friends for reference, and the thing is, they were really cool and they were able to give me a bunch of it. So, get a bunch of reference, that really helps. Uh, next, I used a model I found in 2013, and I thought it would be good, and it's actually not that good. I threw it in Pepakura, and it's just a jagged mess, and I was like, you know what, I hate this, let's fix it. So I did. And I made two different masks for it, and that's the new helmet that I decided to use, and I'll probably be using that same uh, modeling update process to fix the rest of the armor and make something better. But it's still not quite perfect yet, so the next step is to get on paper and to build it in paper. So I threw it in Pepakura and I laid it out to where I had half the parts and I did all the stuff that I didn't need off the pages, printed all the pages and started taping it all together. Now in this you're going to need a knife, sharpies, EVA foam, I was using HD foam, it's really good stuff, some pins, a ruler, quick seal, uh, knives, lots of knives, get lots of knives or a sharpener, paint brushes, FX paint, regular ballpoint pen, uh, super glue's not bad, hot glue's okay, but contact cement, that's, that's the stuff you're going to want to use for this, that's the best glue for this project. Then you want some masking tape and some some blue tape as well. Uh, also get some really thin foam, the foam I use is 6 millimeter to 5 millimeter to 6 millimeter. Uh, so that thin stuff over there was only two millimeter. That black stuff you saw a second ago, that was a PETG plate, and then my Dremel, and then there's my heat gun. These are tin snips right here, and those are really great scissors used to cut thick sheets of plastic like that PETG I was talking about earlier. Now, those tin snips, uh, they're designed for metal. Be careful, they are very sharp. Then you have a uh, roll-on glue and some paper. So you're gonna start printing out your file, and you are gonna start cutting it out. Now. Pepakura has a thing where it likes to print it out with flaps. I actually don't like using those flaps anymore, and here's why. Um, just by having the flaps layer under the other side of the paper, it actually shifts everything. So it's much better to just make strips with glue on them and attach both sides that way. Plus it also reinforces the back if you're building with regular paper. Usually I would recommend building in cardstock, but uh, I decided to go a little bit cheaper and a little bit more flexible. And so I taped it all up and I redrew the pattern. Right here I'm actually darting it so I can have an easier way to cut out that side instead of having to cut all the parts like I did with the, the other pattern. So now I'm cutting out my foam and I'm laying out my pattern completely flat after I've redone it the way I wanted it to be. Then I flipped it over on the other side to get the other sides. And I just marked all those down too. Cut all those out and got two sets. Now here's a really cool tip. If you're cutting tips like that cut towards yourself. If you cut towards yourself, you have a less, much less chance of having the, the foam bend or buckle. Also, start with a new blade if you're going to do one of those inside edges. It's Just trust me, it'll, it'll save you some time and effort. So here all I'm doing is taking the contact cement, throwing it on for about five minutes and letting it dry. And as it dries, I start attaching the pieces together and using those little registration marks, those black dots. That's how I line up everything and get everything just right. Okay, so the job piece was actually pretty interesting because it had uh, a whole bunch of different lines on it. And on the 3D model, there are mountain folds and valley folds. And when I have to transfer those over to EVA foam, I usually use a straight line or a dotted line. A straight line for the valley folds and a dotted line for the mountain folds. So what I would do for those is I would flip over the foam and I would start to carve away a little v-shape so that I can have a 90 degree angle or I would just leave one slit line so I can bend it the other way and get a 90 degree angle the other direction. It's like making a little mountain or making a little valley. I do it a lot on this part right here with the crown and you can see I actually did a 45 degree angle cut on everything too. This was so that I can actually get these pieces to attach to each other cleanly. Now you can see some of the v-grooves I did in some of the places. And the reason why I did those V-grooves was that I can bend the foam and they wouldn't clash up against each other or cause this weird bulge as it was rounding around an edge. So I got some PETG plastic and I cut it down to shape and I did my best to heat it up and bend it to fit inside the actual visor slot. It seemed to work pretty well. I had to use pins to hold the top and bottom halves together. So what I did was I got my blue tape on there, I sanded away some of the edges. I slid it into place and I took my hot glue gun and I just spread some hot glue on the inside on the top of the visor and then again on the bottom of the visor. 
Once, once all the glue was all dried and cooled off, I was able to pull off the pins and I added these extra pieces. Hey, quick update. So uh, I actually lost footage on my other camera over there, so I wanted to give you guys an update as to what I missed, or what y'all missed, because you missed about uh, two hours work. So I reskinned the outside of the top of the visor because I needed to add some detail bits, so I still need to add some detail right here. So um, the visor is taped up, and the reason why it's taped up is because I have to paint and do all this painting stuff, and then finally cut away the paint, and then the blue tape, and then I can see out of it after <laughs> after I cut away some more on the back. Okay. So uh, helmet has been quick sealed. The quick seal is the process of taking uh, quick seal itself. The this stuff right here, dab quick seal. It's a great waterproof seal. And uh, you just take a little bit of water and you put like a small line of the quick seal down. You dip your finger in some water with one drop of like dish soap. Mix it around really good. Try not to get your finger too slick, but just slick enough to where you can start spreading it with your finger and you can really get it in there and smooth it out. So this line still looks rough right now. After we use Plasti Dip, the spray rubber, it will fill in a lot of these lines and we'll do two or three layers of that. And yep, it should come out looking pretty smooth. Now these nice eyebrows I got up here, these are actually gonna be bridge points. What I'm gonna do is take this thing I have drying, that I forgot to take apart from each other for one second. <laughs> Uh-oh, one sec. <laughs> Sorry. So I was actually supposed to take those apart, but if you have small parts and you don't really want to spread around the glue on two tiny real, real tiny things, just, just press them together and clean up anything you need to. But this doesn't need to be shown. This is actually going to go in the back of this mask piece. I drew some lines right there and right there. I'm going to put little bridges, and those little bridges are going to go across into this eye hole and meet up with these two edges right here, so there'll be a little bit of friction. And the rest of the bridge will match right here and I can glue it down, which is gonna be great. And then the next thing I need to do is cover up some of the mouth like right here. Not so much down here at the bottom cause there's no point in doing it that far down, but maybe like a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less, maybe an eighth of an inch up. I'll be marking like a inch long strip and I'm just gonna be not painting that at all. No plastic, no nothing, I'm just gonna pull it away. And the reason why is I'm gonna put contact cement down and I'm gonna put it down right there on that part of the helmet and glue these two parts together. I think I'm also gonna do a little bit of the same right here and right here. And then after those two parts are glued together where that's all painted gold and separate, and this is all painted white and silver and blue. And I'm going to be using a new brand of paint, FX paint. It's acrylic flexible paint. And it's exciting, 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 exciting. And I can't wait to show you because we're actually gonna be using that same stuff as the blue for the top weeks head. So got some more to show you. Uh, Hopefully all the construction videos are done, but now it's going to be all explaining how I finish. Okay, so I already did a base coat of Plasti Dip and it came out okay. So then I did another one where I started with the places I missed and then got the rest of it after that started to dry pretty well. I do three to four layers of Plasti Dip. So this should be layer of right three right here. After that, I'm going to mask it off and get ready to start doing some white paint. So when I Plasti Dip, I try to get close and I try to get a nice smooth layer and try to cover each spot by 50% so I'm always overspraying everything. Not overspraying in the terms of like dumping coats of paint on it or Plasti Dip on it, but like just enough to get a good, good layer that covers both sides as I'm swaying from side to side with the paint can. So I did the same process over and over and over again for each part. And the helmet, I actually painted it a couple of times, but I started painting this visor part gold and the gold I got was not good. For some reason it came out super, super milky. And I think it was one that wanted to have a base coat first and it, I just, I should have put white down first, but it, it's okay. I actually had something better to fix it up, those FX paints. And if you can tell the gold is already 110% better and that was all thanks to FX paint. They are amazing, they are amazing, they are amazing. I highly recommend it. So I put some hot glue on the back to be bridges and I tried to hot glue it to the helmet and it didn't quite work out as well as I was hoping. So I switched over to the good old contact cement, but the problem is with switching over to contact cement is the contact cement will pull up the paint because acetone is an active ingredient inside of the contact cement. So I had to be really, really careful about how I attached all those parts to the visor. So right here, I'm actually painting everything silver and then gold, and I'm just showing how crazy these FX paints are. Uh, these are unsealed parts. They are completely unsealed. All I did was I heat gunned them, so they were uh, heat sealed at least. And then I covered them with the acrylic FX paint, which is flexible and super shiny and super pretty and super, super darn nice. And 
it actually made the gem pieces. Now these are just temporary pieces. I'm not gonna use these for like forever, but they're gonna be placeholders for now. I'm gonna switch over to resin castings eventually, but just to show how crazy these paints are and how well they work, I mean, bam, there you go. Like, I was super impressed. I like these paints a lot, and I'm going to be playing with them a lot more, especially throughout the rest of this build. What do you mean the rest of this build? Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and make the whole suit <laughs> and the other helmet. So it's going to be a little while, but I'm going to try to do my best. I got till September, I think. Maybe October. We'll see. Either way, it's done. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun to make, and I am super excited to finish out the rest of the project. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and go pre-order your CSM Ixa belts or your Sinchoko Seho SH Figure Arts commentary Ixa figures while you have a chance. They look great. Please go get them while you can. Uh, I also want to give a big, big thank you to Team Rider for pushing me over the edge to, you know, just make a suit again and go all out on it. Because it's been a while since I've done one where I've really taken my time. Uh... So yeah, stay tuned. Got more coming soon. Bye. It's a song!